In this video, I'm going to show you how you can track events into your intercom.com account with the help of Google Tag Manager. All and more coming up right after this. All right, back in our intercom account, we have already set up in Google Tag Manager the base tracking code for intercom. So we'll be able to identify users once they log into their account and we have their data available in intercom now. What we want to do in this tutorial is fill the activity column here with event tracking. How would we do that? Let's go over to the setup guide here and enter the custom event. Now here are two tracking codes that we might want to use in order to track events. The first one being a simple event where we just send over the track event call with the name of the event. But if you want to do it a little bit more sophisticated, we would attach also some custom data to that event. And you can attach any kind of data, which will help you later on to segment your users better. So let's try this out. Let's go with this event call first and go back to our page. And the event that I want to now track is when somebody goes to a product page. This is actually pretty easily done via Google Tag Manager because we can identify product pages by the URL up here. So let's go ahead and install this. Let's go over to Google Tag Manager, go on new tag. This will be an intercom event tag for our product views. We'll configure this via the custom HTML option and paste in our code here. Now this is JavaScript, so we need to surround it by script tags. And we are ready to go. Now we need to just rename this event, not invite friend, but rather view product page. That should do it. Now the only thing that I want to make sure is that this actually fires after our general tags. So I'll give a tag firing priority of one. And we could also utilize the tag sequencing functionality, which gets really complicated. And I would recommend to set this up once you run into any problems where you're not able to trigger your events correctly. For now, we'll skip that and go right to the trigger. Now, when do we want to fire this? This will be fired on a page view event. So I'm going to page view and product pages. So as a tag configuration, we'll go with page view and only on some page views, obviously, these should be when the page path contains product. Let's save this and save our tag. Now we have a tag firing priority of one. So we would need to have something higher for our other codes here. Let's go and change that around. Let's say here it's 50. The higher the number, the more priority it has. And on our general page view as well, make this 50. All right, let's save this, refresh our preview and debug mode. And now visit a page here. I'm currently logged in. So I'm going to reload this page. And we see our intercom event product views has fired. So now we should see in our platform, we have John Doe here. And we see a new activity has been recorded in the profile. So if I click on this, you can see other users who performed this action, which is none at the moment. Let's go back here. And unfortunately, we are not able to see which product did he actually view. So let's send in some custom information so we'll be able to identify this as well. Let's go over to setup guide. Again, look into our custom events and look at the information here. Let's copy that for a second, go over to our Google Tag Manager and again into the view product. And let's paste that beneath our opening line here, which kind of looks like this one up here. So just go ahead and delete this part and this part, and that should do it. Here needs to be a comma. So we send over an event call with 
the name of this event and then some custom information. And this custom information is put into key value pairs. Now we can customize this to our heart's content. So for example, if we wanted to not have the order date, but rather would have the page path, we can then put that in as an attribute and get it filled with our variables. Let's try this out. Let's get rid of the other information here. Save this. Refresh. We get a compiler error. Let's see what's that all about. And apparently there's one curly bracket too much. Let's try this now. Save this again. Refresh. Now it goes through. Let's go over to our demo shop and go back to the home page. Go to another product here. And we again have our event call. This time, go back to our profile here. And we see another event and we have these little dots here. We can click and expand it and we see our custom attribute that we sent over. Now, if you have the information available, you could also send over the price, the title of the product, how much was entered in this box here, anything that lets you segment your customers later on. Now, obviously this is not a very sophisticated event that we are sending over, a very standard interaction when a page loads, but the power of Google Tag Manager is really when we are able to track interactions, such as the add to cart click. So how would we do that with Google Tag Manager? We have certain triggers available. Let's go through these steps. First of all, we would need to deploy a generic click trigger. And as a trigger type, we'll choose all elements as the click element here and save this. Refresh our preview and debug mode. Go back to our page, refresh that as well. And this time I'm gonna click on the add to cart button with the command key pressed. This will open up my click in a new tab. We'll go back to the other tab in order to see how variables got filled in our preview and debug console. So here we see a GTM click. Once I clicked on this object, nothing fires just yet, but we can look into the variables. Now the variables don't have our click variables in there just yet. So we need to go back and do this experiment again. Let's go into the variables first and go to the built-in configure variables here and activate our click variables. That's something you only need to do one time. Let's refresh our preview and debug mode, refresh our page, and click on the add to cart click with the command key pressed. And we'll go back, and now we can look into our variables and see how they got filled. Now we can choose which event here is unique to what I'm doing. So. In our case, it would be add to cart because if I click on anything else on the page, so for example, I'm gonna click on this my account link, I'm gonna have another GTM link click, but that gets differently filled. And the click text, for example, is differently filled. And therefore with our fifth click here, we can distinguish that really well. So let's go ahead and use that in our filter section. We'll turn our trigger into a specific one. So this will be a click trigger on our add to cart clicks. We'll go ahead and change our firing options from all clicks to some clicks and choose the variable with which we want to filter down on this element. In our case, it would be clicks text and it should contain or equal add to cart. Let me just control this, see again if that is what we have, add to cart, it actually needs to be small letter, so let's do that and save it. Now, what we need to do now is to attach our trigger to an actual tag. Now we want to fire an event, so I'm just gonna go onto our product view event and actually copy that. All right, and rename that a bit. And this will be an add to cart event. We can send over the page path as well. All right, let's go ahead and define our trigger here. Obviously we don't wanna fire this on a product view, but rather our add to cart click. 
So this is something we defined. Let's save this, refresh, refresh our page. And we see already our product view event. But when I click on this add to cart button, we see down here that our event click also fired into this user. Now, once we go back to our intercom platform and reload the page, we see several add to cart clicks. That's something I've tried out beforehand, our product page view. But again, this is information that only gets sent over once somebody actually clicks on the add to cart button and it transfers over the page path. So this is how you can fill up your activity reports with useful events that you might use to segment your users later, send them a message once they have performed a certain action and track that all in the intercom platform. Obviously you can customize this to your heart's content. For example, send in when somebody buys a product, performs certain action, reaches a certain level on your platform or completes an exercise. It totally depends on your platform itself and is very customizable. Don't forget, once you're done, to go over to your Google Tag Manager account and actually publish this to all your users. You go to the Submit button, give this version a name, and publish this to all your users so it's now live on your website. So there you have it. This is how you can install events with the help of Google Tag Manager into your Intercom account. Now, if you haven't installed Intercom with Google Tag Manager yet, then head over to our first video, which we've done on this series. And if you like this video, then consider subscribing over there because we'll bring you new videos every Wednesday. My name is Julian. Till next time.